Mayor Pete Buttigieg, or elitist Pete as I like to call him, is one of the most, if not the most, shadiest 2020 Democratic Party primary contenders. Nobody has more billionaire donors than Pete Buttigieg. He is doing fundraisers in the Hamptons with rich people constantly. So this is someone who is not going to help you. He doesn't care about you. He's a careerist. He's just trying to get elected because he wants power. That's it. You know, he has demonstrated time and again that if he's elected, there will be no real change. He'd just be the errand boy for elites. Now, one thing about him is he's doing all of these fundraisers and it's not just that he's doing the fundraisers that in and of itself is problematic, but what's especially shady is that he is shutting out the press. He doesn't want them to attend these fundraisers. Now, if you're Mayor Pete, that makes sense because they're clearly having an influence on his policies because when he entered this race, he supported Medicare for All. Fast forward a couple of months and he's the number one recipient among 2020 Democrats from the health industry. The only person who takes more money from the health industry than him is Donald Trump. He even is taking more money than Joe Biden. So, you know, it's not surprising that he changed his position on Medicare for All and is now one of the chief opponents to Medicare for All. And it's why he doesn't want you to see what's going on at these fundraisers because there's some shady shit that's going on. Um, nonetheless, the media is now starting to kind of give him the front runner treatment given that he's pulling in first in Iowa and New Hampshire. And he does not handle pressure very well. Because when he was asked recently whether or not he would open up his fundraisers to the press, look at how irritated he got. Earlier today, you said you were open to having a conversation about opening your fundraisers. And that's a question that reporters have been asking for months now. So I'm wondering, when do you expect to be to actually have that conversation and give like an answer on that? Uh, again, I don't have a timeline for you. As the as the candidate, can't you just direct your campaign to open those fundraisers? What's it? As the candidate, can't you just direct your campaign to open those fundraisers? Yes. And why haven't you done so? What's that? Why haven't you done so? Uh, there are a lot of considerations, and I'm thinking about it. Last question. Can you give us an example of those considerations? No. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, Thanks. Thank you. Wow. The audacity of this guy. I mean, he's literally visibly irritated that reporters would dare ask what the considerations are for opening up these fundraisers to the press. There's really no consideration, right? It's whether or not you want to be more transparent. But the fact that people have to beg him to be transparent tells you a lot about him. It tells you that if he's elected, he's going to do fuck all for America, right? He'd implement more centrist neoliberal policies. Americans would become increasingly, you know, um, desperate and radicalized as a result. Um, and what's going to happen? Once he serves four to eight years, we'll get a president, Tom Cotton, uh, Steve King, Roy Moore, someone who's an even bigger ghoul than Donald Trump. So this person, if he were to win, um, first of all, I don't think that he actually is capable of beating Donald Trump. But if he did beat Donald Trump, he'd just be another Bill Clinton, but perhaps worse than Bill Clinton, because he doesn't even try to appeal to voters. Like, I don't see any policies that he's talking about. All he does is shit on progressive policy proposals and this dude is running because he thinks he is owed the office of the presidency i can't stand him <laughs> i mean for those of you who've been watching the show i absolutely cannot stand him now the good news about this video is that it went viral and it led to him reversing course because he has since been effectively shamed into being more transparent. Because as Daniel Morans of HuffPost reports, the presidential campaign of South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg announced Monday that it would allow members of the news media to cover future private fundraisers and would disclose the names of super donors known as bundlers. Reporters will be permitted to cover Buttigieg's fundraisers starting on Tuesday, and the campaign will provide the names of bundlers who solicit multiple donations from other wealthy individuals by the end of the week, according to a statement from 
campaign manager Mike Schmuel. Of the four Democratic candidates leading in the polls, only Buttigieg and former Vice President Joe Biden have requested donations in private, high-dollar fundraisers. Biden has allowed reporters to cover those fundraisers. And while Buttigieg began his campaign by publicly releasing the names of his bundlers, he has not updated his public list of bundlers since April, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. No other candidate who relies on bundlers, including Biden, has so much as begun to publicly identify them. Now, that's great. Um, I don't think he deserves any credit for this because he wouldn't actually have reversed course here had he not been shamed into doing it. Like, if you're running to be the president, we shouldn't have to beg you to be more transparent, especially when it comes to something like big donors, right? Because you know that money in politics is an issue. In fact, he talks about big money in politics, very vaguely so, but nonetheless, he at least pays lip service to the idea that money in politics is a problem. So if you're saying that, we shouldn't have to beg you to be more transparent. But here we are, and he's going to be more transparent, right? Nice. But the issue isn't that there isn't enough transparency with regard to money and politics. The issue are these fundraisers to begin with. The issue is the money itself in politics. That's the issue. So to me, the real question isn't whether or not Pete Buttigieg is going to be more transparent and he's going to tell us who's corrupting him. What I would like is for him to not take the money in the first place so there is no corruption. There's no potential for money influencing his political agenda, because we saw firsthand what that does. He came into this primary process supporting Medicare for All, and then he took thousands upon thousands of dollars from the health industry, and now he's against Medicare for All. So I don't care if you're more transparent and you disclose who's corrupting you. What I care about is that you are being corrupted. Now, somebody asked him recently, would you swear off these fundraisers altogether and stop taking billionaire money? His response is uh, very telling. It's a hard no. Now, for those of you listening on iTunes, he was asked, um, I wanted to ask if you think that taking big money out of politics includes not taking money from billionaires and uh, through closed door fundraisers. And he said unequivocally, no, it was difficult to make out the audio, but there were subtitles on it. Um, that tells you everything you need to know about Pete Buttigieg. When he talks about the influence of money in politics, he's not serious because that's not part of his consideration. Okay, so you're not serious about getting money out of politics. Thus, you are lying to people when you talk about how corrosive money is. And I mean, you of all people really should not talk about the influence of money in politics because, I mean, you're just not the right messenger for the job here. But time and again, Pete Buttigieg has shown that he doesn't care about policy issues. He doesn't care about anything but advancing his own career. And the fact that he is still polling in first place in Iowa and New Hampshire should worry everyone. Because even if I doubt he'd win without the support of black voters, I mean, that still could give him enough momentum to carry him further in this primary. And if he were to be the nominee, um, he'd lose to Donald Trump. And if he didn't lose, if he managed to win, nothing would get accomplished and we'd get someone worse than Donald Trump in four to eight years, as I said earlier. Um, and... Even in the best case scenario, if he loses this primary, we're still going to have the establishment shove him down our throats every four to eight years because they love him. He's young, right? There's a lot of longevity with regard to his political career. Um, so I, I'm sick of Mayor Pete already, and this is really our only uh, first introduction into him nationally. I was aware of him back in 2017 when he ran to be the DNC chair. But this dude is is not serious about policy. He doesn't actually want to affect change. He just is running because he wants power. If people don't see that, then we have to make them see it because I think it's pretty obvious. Beta male, not a beta male.